Hi y'all, welcome to my channel and in today's video I am going to be doing a flip through and showing you what a lesson looks like in Around the World in Picture Books by Beautiful Feet Books. So stay tuned. Alright you guys, well if you are new, welcome, welcome to my channel Pursuing Peace. My name is Dina and I am a homeschooling mama of five kiddos, six and under. And on this channel I share my passions for Christ, for homeschooling, and for encouraging mamas in their faith. And in this amazing, even though it's a little bit crazy sometimes, <laughs> amazing season of motherhood. So if you'd like to join me on this journey, then click the subscribe button down below and don't forget to click the little bell icon so that way you know whenever new videos pop up. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Dina underscore Pursuing Peace if you want to get an inside glimpse on what goes on around here on a daily basis. Okay, so today I am so excited about this video. I have been wanting to show you guys Beautiful Feet books for such a long time now. I just haven't had the opportunity to do it, but today is the day. And I'm also excited because I am collabing with my sweet friend Deanna over at Call to Cultivate. I have mentioned her a few times in my videos and she was one of my very first mama friends here on YouTube. Deanna is so sweet. She is full of wisdom. She is a godly woman. She knows how to homeschool her kids pretty darn well. <laughs> and she is just a joy to watch. So if y'all haven't checked out her channel, I will leave it linked down below so you can go and watch her videos because I am sure that you will love her. So if you're interested in seeing what Deanna is using for her curriculum and what sample lesson she is doing today, then go on over to her channel right after this video. Okay, you guys, so like I was saying before, I have been wanting to show you guys this curriculum for such a long time. I've been wanting to do a flip through and I've been wanting to show you kind of a sample lesson because we just absolutely love it. I love Beautiful Feet books. And if you don't know a whole lot about Beautiful Feet books, it's very Charlotte Mason based and it's very much centered around living picture books. And you guys, I love this. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know one of my favorite things to do is cuddle up on the couch with my kids and read them a picture book. And using Beautiful Feet books has helped me to do that. Now this curriculum from them specifically is a geography curriculum. They do have an early American history curriculum and I have a whole video about that and I will link that in the description box below. So they have two books in their geography series. It's Around the World in Picture Books, part one and then part two. And I'm going to be doing kind of a flip through of both of those today and then a sample lesson from part two. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what I've got. Okay, you guys, so these are the two different um, Around the World in Picture books. Here's part one, and then here is part two. And the only real difference is that they cover different countries. And also part one is a little bit thinner than part two. Two, but they're both laid out about the same and so what I'm gonna do first is I am going to kind of show you kind of a um, general layout of how these books are laid out so I will show you part one first and here are all the countries that it covers part one is China Japan Thailand India Antarctica Australia Morocco Egypt Tanzania and Kenya Ghana and then at the end we have some nature drawings and some art drawings and I'll show you that. And then it just kind of is an introduction to the curriculum. Um, it kind of shows you how to use this, you know, using the guide. It tells you about note taking, how to do that. Um, and then it goes through and it tells you about the different books that are included in the pack if you decided to get the pack. Um, and then it starts off with the first section i guess which is um china so this book is laid out pretty much exactly how this book is laid out so since i am going to be showing you the lesson from this book um, i'm going to put this one away and we're just going to kind of dive into this one so it's laid out pretty much the same thing where it tells you everything you know welcome um take talking about note taking um talking about the different books Oh, this one in addition has like some nature studies and it talks about that a little bit in there. 
talks about the different books that it uses in the jumbo pack and then it gets right into France. And this is the one that I'm gonna show you today. Um, but I also wanted to show you, so those notebook pages in the back, they're right here and there's um, I think one or two. Okay, so this is France, so the animals. And then it's got the flag and the country. And this is Spain, the animals you can find in Spain, and then the country and the flag. So it's all of those like that, animals and the country and the flag, and you've got one for each country. And then over here in the back, you've got art. And so this one is for France, the Eiffel Tower, for tulips, for Holland, Spain. So what you do with these is you basically, it'll let you know when to have your children color these. And if you have more than one child, then you just make photocopies of it. And that's the only thing is um, I don't like making photocopies on books that aren't spiral bound because then, you know, this, this section over here looks dark um, in the photocopy. Um, but it's okay. The kids don't seem to mind it. It's one of those things that it's not a big deal. It would be nice if it were like maybe spiral bound or... You know, maybe I can get them digital, digitally, but again, not a deal breaker. Okay, so before we go any further, I do want to show you guys this. This is something that I created in Canva and it's just kind of a day planner for me. Um, I knew that I only wanted to do this for two weeks and you'll see in here, they have more than two weeks worth of lessons within this France section. So I just wanted to kind of go through and um, map it out for myself. So that way I can try to squeeze in as much as possible within the two weeks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be going back and forth between this, what I've added um, onto it, and then what is just purely in the curriculum so that way y'all can see this also. So the very first lesson in pretty much all of these um, sections is you, know, you, you just get to know the country. And so what you do is you take your maps book, like this right here. You take your maps book and you open it up. Oh, and it tells you to sing a Seven Continents song right here. I don't know what that song is. <laughs> and so I actually just looked up one on YouTube and I'll link that down below for you guys. So it tells you to open it up to, to the very first page right here. And so it tells you, you know, which continent is this country in and find that. And then it'll tell you which page to open it up to. And here is France, as you can see here. And then it pretty much just walks you through the lesson. Like this one says, see if the student can recognize some of the countries of Europe. So point to the different ones um, around France. And it also says, you know, identify the bodies of water that are around France and what does France border and then point out some of the most famous um, archi architectural structures of Paris, including the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, the Palace of Versailles. Each of these additional sites can be visited in This is Paris um, by someone. I can't, I'm not going to try to pronounce that name, but we did get that book and you'll see it a little bit later on. And then after studying the map in detail, have the student select any of the geographical or architectural sites that are of interest and spend some time researching one or two. So then at that point, it's just exploring the map. And as you can see, this map is just full of just different information and the kids really enjoy seeing all the pictures and seeing, you know, like the Eiffel Tower. They know the Eiffel Tower, so they're like, look, the Eiffel Tower. And then we can see what's around the Eiffel Tower. We can see all the rivers. And then on the bottom here, it says, after studying and researching them, have the student record a few facts and an illustration in the student notebook. So what we did is we actually colored France um, and the flag. So that way we have a cover for that section of our notebook. And so I will show you here our lesson for day one was we watched Are We There Yet? And that is just a cute, oh my gosh, you guys. These are cute videos from um, National Geographic Kids and they are on YouTube. I will link them below, but they have one for almost every country um, that we've explored through Beautiful Feet books and it's just so fun. You get to see the world through the eyes of, of kids, basically. And so it's just a lot of fun and I will link that down below, like I said. On the maps, we identified the monuments. We did the continent song and the ocean song, which I did find one on YouTube, and I will link both of those below. Um, and then we colored the country and the flag. And then what I wanted to do is learn to count to 10 in French, and we found a video for that one too. So I will link all of this stuff down in the description box below. So that's basically it for lesson one. 
So lesson two is basically getting ready for you guys to explore this book here. It's Anno's Journey, and it's just basically, it's it's a literal picture book. Like, it, <laughs> there are no words in there, but it is so neat. It's of the different, like, landscapes and villages and cities of Europe. And so, but what is unique about Anno's journey is that he kind of depicts some of these paintings within his illustrations. And so in order to get ready to read that book, it says to kind of explore these paintings and introduce them to your kids. Now it's got all the facts here for you and it's got, you know, just different things in here for you to read, but my kids are so small. So what I decided to do is actually turn it into a game. And so what I did is I copied these and I laminated them and I cut them out as you can see here and made it into a memory game. And so we just played memory. And then whenever we found a matching set, then we read who painted it and when they painted it and all of the different facts that you learn here. So this was really neat. We got to do this before jumping into Anno's journey. And then lesson three here is just reading Anno's journey. And what I love about Beautiful Feet Books curriculum is that they walk you through everything. So um, for instance here, begin Anno's journey, explore scenes one through seven. So you're not just kind of opening the book, like it's, it's a guided tour, if you will. <laughs> and be sure to locate Anno in each scene. So then going down here, it says in scene three, Anno enters a small village by horse. And here are depicted two impressionist works, the woman doing laundry by the mill. So this is talking about the paintings before. Now, as much as I enjoyed Anno's journey, it was still a little bit hard for my kids to really see all of the little um, kind of details in here. So what we did on day three was actually, we used the pointer to find France on our wall map. And then we recreated um, a painting by Millet using those memory cards. So each, each one of them picked a card that they wanted to recreate. And we did that. Um, we watched the video and we did actually do a little bit of Anno's journey that day. Oh, I forget Hello, <laughs> are you joining us? Yes, you are, aren't you? <laughs> I love you. Lesson four over here is all about, it, it is exploring Anno's journey a little bit further also, but it is more so about um, this painting by George Surratt. And so, like I said, Beautiful Feet walks you through this stuff. Another thing is it has really good um, resources in here. So for instance, right here it says, for further research, Khan Academy has an excellent six minute video on this painting. Um, and so we researched that and we watched that on YouTube because you can watch that on YouTube. Then from down here, it says from the art connection in this study on France, follow the assignment for a Sunday afternoon at La Grande Hot. Or I, I really don't know how to say that, you guys. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right. And so the art connection that it's talking about is a little bit further on in the lesson. So each lesson, as you saw before, has a library connection and an art connection, and these have nature connections. Um, and it says to go and find the painting in this book. So this is what the assignment is. Um, find the painting in this book, which this is basically a coloring book um, of masterpieces, basically <laughs> art masterpieces to color, and then just paint it. And so what we did is we painted the picture like George Seurat. So this style is called pointillism. So they used dots of different colored paint to paint the entire picture. I don't know if any of them actually painted the entire picture, but they definitely had fun doing it. And um, now they know what pointillism um, looks like. And actually pointillism is in our, um, the good and the beautiful language arts and math actually um, too. So this was really fun for them to connect the two together. And so for day four, we again, we did the continents and ocean song every day so that way they can memorize those. I'll come back to this in a bit. We watched, um, I think it's Mati and Dada, um, and they have a bunch of different episodes on um, famous artists. So we watched that one. We watched how to paint like Surat, and then again, we paint um, a Sunday afternoon. And so what I put up here is I printed this out just from like, you know, Google images or whatever, and it's um, the image of France, and I actually started 
having them, you know, map it out like the rivers and the oceans and where it's at within the European continent. And we did a little bit every day. So like in this, on this day, we just did the rivers and that's all they did. And I used the Big Maps book to do that. So in lesson five, again, you're going through Anna's journey, but again, it gives you different things to do, not just sit and, you know, go through the book. So here it gives you a little bit of history of um, Buffalo Bill's Wild West show coming to Paris. And then it talks a little bit about a marionette theater. And for a fun introduction to marionette art, watch Scott Land's The Amazing Valentine on YouTube. And then it tells you which scene to look at. Oh, look, um, in scene 16, find the Sesame Street characters, Big Bird, Kermit the, and Kermit the Frog, Oscar the Grouch, and Cookie Monster. <laughs> so that's really neat in um, Anna's journey. The kids really actually love looking at those. And so see, it just kind of gives you so much information. And I love that it gives you like videos to look at. It looks, it gives you resources from online to go through and look at. It's not just like you're reading this and then you're reading the book. It's like, it gives you a variety of things to look at, to explore all of the different things. And then on day five, we did our oceans and continents song. We, on the maps that I just showed you, we did um, the oceans around France. We read about Ruth gleaning because it does kind of talk a little bit about the gleaners painting in here. And then we used watercolors to paint the gleaners um, from that Art Connection book. Let's go in the middle bubble. And then on lesson six, this is probably one of our favorites. This is Anatoly. Um, and the kids just really loved this book. They have read it a few times since then. <laughs> And it's all about a rat who's really good about tasting the different cheeses, whether the cheese is good or bad or whatever. And we learned a few different French phrases like c'est la vie and voila. And so the kids really liked that. What we did on this day too, because this one went into a weekend, is we actually um, tasted different cheeses. It says, consider having a cheese tasting of the six types of cheese Anatoly liked best. This way students can have an opportunity to try some different tastes in cheese from typical American varieties. Now we live in a small town in South Carolina. Our variety of cheeses here was, is not very good. And this was in the middle of the pandemic. And so we were able to find a few different cheeses that the kids hadn't tasted before. Um, they weren't all French, but you know, it's fine. The experience was really good and the kids actually really loved that. They loved having a little like thumbs up, thumbs down. Yes, I like this cheese. No, I did not like this cheese. <laughs> You know, it's just so much fun. If you like it, thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. So then this is where we tasted the cheeses and we marked Paris on the map because Anatoly is based in Paris. And then we wrote the French phrases in our notebooks and yeah. And then lesson seven is reading stone soup. And it says here, the setting of Stone Soup is during a desperate time in France after a war. After reading the story, consider the character of the soldiers and the villagers. And so it guides you in what to talk about um, while you are reading the stories or after you read the stories and kind of how to get dive deeper into the book with your kids. And then down here it says, if desired, have students record this in, the student, in their student notebooks. And this is just a quote from one of the earliest versions of this um, Stone Soup tail. <laughs> and then going back to my plan, on day seven we read Stone Soup, we reviewed our French numbers and colors, and then we ate like Top Ramen for lunch. <laughs> we ate some soup for lunch. <laughs> Okay, and then the next part is when it starts to get a little bit tricky for me as far as only having like four days left. <laughs> but the next part kind of goes into The Little Prince. And so it gives you kind of a brief history of the author of The Little Prince. Um, it gives you a library connection. So each of these sections here is a book and then it kind of gives you a little bit about the book so you can know which one you want to get out of the library. And this one here is actually the one that we bought. I was so happy I could find it because it is a deluxe pop-up book of The Little Prince. And as you can tell, it's used and we had to tape it up. And But it is so cool, you guys. This is a pop-up version of this book. And I just like, oh my goodness, we just loved this. My kids just loved reading these books. And they're broken out into pretty easy to read little sections. And so it was really nice to be able to just read this. We actually read it as a read aloud during lunchtime. Ooh. <laughs> 
So yeah, so this one, I was just so happy that I could find it. Our local library, unfortunately, was shut down when we did this, but I have used the library connections before, and every book that they have recommended to get has been a winner, and it's been a hit in our home. So for The Little Prince, um, the author was born in Lyon, France, and so we marked that on the map. We read The Pilot and The Little Prince. I ended up buying that on Amazon. Oh, and we made a string airplane. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot about that. That was so much fun. I just looked it up on Pinterest, like a fun little airplane kind of thing that we can make that wasn't just folding paper, but something else. And so I found it on Pinterest and oh my gosh, that was just so fun. They played with it for maybe like an hour, just sitting there flying their little airplanes. <laughs> You love it? So the next few lessons are just kind of going through The Little Prince and asking questions about it. And so like I said, we did this as a read aloud. Um, and so I kind of asked questions, you know, when we were eating lunch and stuff like that. Here is another um, library connection. Just so many good books, you guys. And some of these, like Manfish, is on YouTube. You can probably find a lot of these on YouTube as a read aloud um, or an audiobook. So this is just a description of Manfish and a little bit about each of these books. Then you've got the art connection here. Um, and then we have artist biography connection. So I didn't get to go deeper into this because we actually do go through the different artists in classical conversations. So I didn't hit on this too much, but I did get these books right here. I got The Magical Garden of Claude Monet. Um, and I got, oh, Linné. I want to say that says Linné. Um, in Monet's Garden. And these have been some of my favorites, um, especially to my six-year-old. She loves these. And I ended up getting a few of these other ones by the same author, Lawrence Arn Arnholt, um, just to kind of give them a, like, a, like a little introduction to these different artists. Henri Matisse. Um, so there's, see, there's just so much, you guys, music connection. Now, there's not always this much in one section, um, but because it was France, I mean, come on. There's so much culture in France, and um, so... It's understandable that this was packed full of just amazing goodness. <laughs> and then one of the last things is to color the animals and then to color France. But we already had done France, so we did the different animals and we painted them. And then it gives you kind of a, a brief description of the animals. And I believe one of these even gave us a video to watch. So I just read this as they were cut coloring and cutting out the different animals. So before I get into the cuisine, let me see what else we had here. And then on day nine, we drew in Saint, mm, I'm not gonna be able to read that now. This is, we did this a while ago. I could have done it a couple of months ago and now I can't remember how to pronounce this. <laughs> but we drew in this on our map um, and then we watched Manfish on YouTube and we made a snorkel mask and played with our snorkel mask. And then we learned about Marie Curie. Um, oh, it was on Kindle. I got the audiobook for that. We colored the coloring sheet that I found on Pinterest as well. And we located Poland, which was neat because we've actually been to Poland. Um, and then we found Paris on the map also. And that's kind of the end of my planning that I did. But again, we kind of continued it in that um, I had all of those additional books, and so we read more. Um, we just watched more videos of France and just kind of dug in a little bit deeper. And then if, at the end of each of these sections is a um, recipe or two recipes. I believe there's two here. Yep. Um, and we were going to try to do this, um, but, I mean, we did do some cheese stuff, but we didn't do, like, this up here. Um, but I did end up making crepes one day. They're actually really easy to make. I found a recipe online and the kids really liked them. We put fruit on them um, and it was just really enjoyable for them. Soap or not? Mm -hmm. You let them break their soap? Mm-hmm. Mm. This is the best pancake <laughs> I have in my life. Mm -hmm. Pancake from France. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is 
the Yay. best. And so then this next one here is Spain. So yeah, you guys, so I hope that gives you kind of an idea of what a section in Beautiful Feet looks like and how you can tailor it to little kids or you could, I mean, you really can just use this and like, I just like to do extra stuff because I'm a little bit extra, but. <laughs> But this is so good on its own. And even if you just read the picture books, oh my goodness, you guys, they're just so much good information. All right, you guys. Well, I hope that that was helpful. I hope that was encouraging. If you are interested in Beautiful Feet books at all, I will leave them linked down below. They do offer a 10% off military discount and a 10% off missionary discount, which I just think is wonderful of them. Um, plus, if you decide to get the jumbo pack with all of the picture books already included, then they do offer free shipping also. Another great thing about Beautiful Feet books is that if you already have books that are within in the pack then all you have to do is call them up tell them which books you already have and they will take out those books plus the cost of those books and I believe they will do that up to five books in within the jumbo pack but if you would also like to just get the teacher's guide you can you are more than welcome to just do that also and like you saw it is a wonderful way to explore different cultures and different people and to just open your child's eyes to the world around them all right, you guys, well, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon. And please don't forget to go check out Deanna's channel. Again, I will leave it linked down below in the description box. And let's be friends. Follow me over on Instagram at Dina underscore pursuing peace. All right, you guys, well, I hope you're having a blessed day and I will see you next week with another video. Bye.